Welcome, I'm Robert Estrin here at virtualsheetmusic.com and livingpianos.com with a technique video for you, the Band-Aid approach to practicing. All right, what is the Band-Aid approach? You may have never heard of it before. Well, that's very likely because I made it up <laughs> and it's actually a great technique. You know, in practicing, I really strive for efficiency. I want to get as much done as I possibly can in the time I have. You know, I wish I could practice all day long, but my schedule doesn't always permit it. Before concerts, sometimes I'll get you know that opportunity, but things get crazy, and I try to get as much done every moment. Now, there's many valuable techniques. Of course, memorization is a staple for any pianist, and other instrumentalists might memorize as well. There's technique, there's scales, there's arpeggios, there's refinement, there's a whole host of different types of practice technique. Well, what is this about the bandit approach and why is it so special and why does it improve the efficiency of your practice? Well, I'm going to tell you all about that. Here's the way it works. If everything was linear in life, then this would have no validity. In other words, if you had equal problems in all parts of your music, then there'll be no reason for this. But the fact is you want to have some way to zero in and be able to practice everything effectively. I remember talking to somebody as a youngster who thought I could learn anything just by starting the metronome at the slowest possible speed, playing everything from the beginning to the end and raise one notch at a time, and you could master any piece of music that way. Well, this is true, but it would take an incredibly long amount of time to, to be able to master a piece going through everything painstakingly slowly. Now here's why that is not efficient and where the super efficiency of the band-aid approach comes in. There might be whole large sections that you could already play up the tempo just fine after learning it. So why go through the tedium of practicing everything equally? So how do you zero in? Well here's how it works and I'm going to demonstrate by using the first moment of the children's corner suite of Claude Debussy. And this is the Dr. Gratis at Pernasum. Let's say you were playing this piece and you got to a certain part and you had a problem. I want to play this piece and see, hopefully I'll have a problem. I haven't played it in a while. And then I'll demonstrate if I don't, maybe I'll create one for you. All right? So here's a little bit of Debussy. And you notice right there I missed a note. I don't know if you could hear it. So what is a band-aid approach? Do I start? Okay, let's get the metronome out. Start from the beginning. No, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to go right to where that problem was. I'm putting a patch right on the problem. Now, once you put the bandage on and you have it totally ironed out and you can play it many times effortlessly, you can play it even faster than it goes and you're totally comfortable, remember you must always put your corrections in context. So be, the next step would be to go back not all the way to the beginning because that's not efficient either. Because if there's a problem connecting the phrase, you want to start maybe a measure or two before the problem, the, the patch you just made. Make sure the patch is in there. Once it's fluid, starting the phrase before, and you can do that a number of times, then finally go back to the beginning of the section or the beginning of the piece in this case, and make sure that your bandage sticks. All right? So that's the band-aid approach. You can use this any time you have a piece of music. For example, if you're restudying a piece you haven't played in a long time, do you have to relearn everything? Well, maybe not. You might go through and find you can play large sections without a problem. As soon as you get to a part that is a problem, that's the part to zero in. I like to use the band-aid approach when I'm learning music uh, to a company or chamber music because with chamber music, it's not uh, required or even uh, desirable to memorize the music because you're playing with other musicians, you want to see the score. So there are large sections I can read just fine. So I get to a part where I can't, I practice that one part, then I go back a little bit, make sure I can get through from starting just before, then I go back to the beginning of that section or the beginning of the movement, make sure it's there until the next place it needs a bandage and patch that one up. 
So try this band-aid approach in your practice. See if it can save time and you can maximize the efficiency of the time you spend practicing your instrument. Thanks so much for joining me, Robert Estrin, here at virtualsheetmusic.com and livingpianos.com. <laughs> <laughs>